And there's Ben. All right. It's going to go about right here. Okay. So you guys see the board? Okay. Yes. You guys can? Yeah. Okay. I need to do this. I'm going to go here and get you guys on the side so I can see you guys a little bit. Okay. All right. So, uh, polyprotic acids. Um, I'm going to talk about what they are. Like I said, if you have that page in front of you, it'll make this a little bit easier. These things also have kind of a nice cheat code that make your life a little bit easier. A polyprotic acid basically means the board's not working. Okay. Basically means it has more than one proton or one more, more than one ionizable H plus. So that's what the whole term polyprotic, many protons. Now the thing about these, here's a couple of examples of them, H2SO4 and H2SO3, okay? Anytime you see multiple H's written at the beginning of an acid, it qualifies as a polyprotic. Um, each H plus will have its own Ka. So if you guys look on page 1126 for that chart, if you have it in front of you, um, you're going to see that there are certain acids that have multiple KAs. So if you just look up H2SO4, um, it, actually it's first KA. Do you guys see what it says? Does it say large? It says strong acid, right? So strong acid. So we'll talk about why H2SO4 is kind of a weirdo. But you'll see that there's another column for KA2 that has a value as well. And here's the idea. You'll notice that every Ka1 is bigger, or sorry, is a bigger number than every Ka2 and Ka3. So here's what the translated means for us. It means that it's always easier to remove the first proton than it is the second. And if you have three protons, that means it's always gonna be easier to remove the second one than the third. So. Each Ka is always going to follow this format. Ka1 is always bigger than Ka2 is always bigger than K3. Okay? So there's that. If you guys have any questions and need me to stop, holler at me as we're going through this. Um, I, like I said, I'll share this video. And you actually already have these slides. These are the uh, slides from the other day. All right. So here's the deal. Cheat code here something that will make your life a little bit easier. So I'm not sure this is in the book. It might be in the book. I don't know. If you're going to find the pH of a polyprotic, you need to pay attention to the Ka values. And the reason is with a lot of these acids, the pH that you can find or that you find for a polyprotic can be determined by, can be determined by looking at the first Ka only. All right. A lot of times here's what happens. Um, the first H plus breaks off and the second H plus that breaks off, it doesn't happen very much. So it happens so in such a small amount that it actually doesn't really affect the pH a heck of a lot. So for a lot of these things, you can look at the first Ka. So for a lot of pro polyprotic problems, it's way easier because it's literally what you did yesterday with, uh, uh, a uh, ice table. Okay. So here's sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is one of the um, strong acids that I said that we might talk about down the road. Um, sulfuric acid is a strong acid for its first H plus. Okay. So when you have H2SO4 and it breaks into this, this is 100% breaks into that. Okay, those two things. The majority of the H pluses you get from sulfuric acid come from that reaction. Here's the second reaction because it has a Ka, it establishes equilibrium. By the way, if there's any point where you can't see the board or see what I'm writing, let me know. Okay, so this is the second reaction. So when sulfuric acid breaks into its H pluses, you get a tremendous amount from that one because it is a strong acid. This guy, though, because it's at equilibrium and because it has a Ka, you don't get very much from. So the pH of sulfuric acid is largely determined by 
the first H plus. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you two things that you can uh, use to figure this stuff out. All right. Almost all the H pluses come from the first ionization, as we say. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm just trying to hit some topics that I think maybe down the road might give you guys some fits. I don't know. Or maybe not. By the time you hit this in college, you would have had a semester and probably a semester and a half of college chemistry. So that's kind of where we're at on your second semester. Okay. Here's the key idea, and this is the this is the cheat code. Okay. If you look at the K values and they differ by more than, and I wrote this in exponential form or as an exponent, so you guys can just use an easy comparison. If they differ by more than a thousand or 10 to the third, I wrote 10 to the third so you can just compare exponents on the Ks. You can get a good estimation of the pH by only considering Ka1, all right? Okay, so um, I want, does, does everybody have that chart in front of them or can you see them? Thumbs up, okay. Ben has his. I don't know. Jaylee, do you have yours? Yeah. yeah. Also, I'm going to turn on my phone. You're what? I can't, I'm going to join this on my phone because I can't see some of it. What can't you see? Like, I can't see where you're standing right now. That's okay. I'm not in the picture right now. Oh, well, I can't see the sides of the board. Can you see me now? Partially, yeah. Hey, you guys, unmute and tell me what you can see and what you can't see. Maddie, what can you see? I can see everything, but I can see everything. Bottom. You can see everything, but what? I know that it's K because I heard you write it, but I cannot see that it's a K A. Right there. Yeah, that, yeah. I can see the top of the wall. <laughs> Do you guys have a white bar like across your screen? No. Mm -mm. no. Can you see it now? Yeah. It's like the okay. side cut off of mine. So I'm just going to join on my phone. So you can see. Uh, so <laughs> on, on the video it. that I'm recording here, I think everything's going to be good. So if there's stuff that you need me to write in a different location or whatever, let me it's, know. Let me watch it on the video. What's that? When I watched it on the video yesterday, you can see everything. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the heck. So if you want me to put something in, I'll try to keep everything in the middle of the board because I'm pretty sure... You guys can all see that area right there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Sorry. I don't know. Technology. All right. So the key idea here, I want you guys to look at that chart here and with me look and find um, H2CO3. It's called carbonic acid. Okay. That's going to be the acid that we do as an example here. So H2CO3. Here's what I want you guys to notice. H2CO3 on that chart has two Ka's. Its first Ka is 4.3 times 10 to the seventh, or negative seventh, sorry. It's Ka1. And Ka2 is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th. Okay? So here's the nice thing about this with poly products. All you have to do is look at these ex exponents. If they are different by more than three, then you don't even have to worry about any extra Ka's. You can literally do this like we did yesterday. All right? So that's the whole, that's the secret to doing these right, is you don't have to do two ice tables. Now I'm gonna show you guys today how to do an additional ice table and we'll just use this exact answer here of this we'll use this problem here I'll show you what uh, sometimes asked of you when you have to do multiple ice tables okay so let's go ahead and go through how to find the pH of this so if we know what we can find the pH of this by just looking at the first ionization that's literally all we will do okay we will not worry about a second ionization of that part. So here's how this would work. Like 037, 0, and 0, 
minus x. Plus, if, I, if you guys have any questions at any point, just holler at me, okay? Like, why are you doing this? Okay? So what we'd have to do here, and this is the whole key, is to use the correct Ka. This is the Ka1 because it's for the first H+. plus. So what we would do here is we would plug in, and we would have essentially x squared over 0 0.037 minus x is equal to Ka1, which we said was 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay? So yesterday's cheat factor was the idea where we would just get rid of this x here and then find the percent ionizable. I already did the work here, guys, so you guys don't have to do the percent ionized just because um, I don't want to waste your guys' time. Um, i got to find my calculator. Okay, let me see your time. Um, okay, so... What I got for x here was 1.26 times 10 to the negative 4. Did anybody else get that? So all we got to do is take the negative log of this value. So about 3.9 is the pH of H2CO3. Okay? We don't have to do an additional ice table. I'm going to show you where you would have to do an additional ice table, just so you can see an example of this. All right, I'm going to pause. If you have any questions, let me know. What did you do before this problem? What did I do before this problem? What do you mean? Yeah, with the exponent things. Oh, so why did I write the two exponents down? The, the KAs? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just saw that you had two things written down with exponents before. Oh, so what I was doing is I was comparing the KA1 to the KA2, and oh, I noticed okay. that they were greater than 1,000 apart from each other. So that tells me I don't have to worry about the KA2. That's the cheat code that you guys need to get down. Okay. Okay? Good. Any other questions before I show you that guys? That problem was like the problems we did yesterday, right? Yes. This is the, yeah, this is exactly like the problems we did yesterday, except for you have to kind of look and see if you have to do another ice table, which we did, and we said, nah, we're not going to do extra one. Okay. Okay? All right. Sweet. Now, here's the deal. Can you guys read that at the top? No. No. Uh, like the title? Yes. No. no. Can't see it? Can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Finding the concentration of a conjugate base of a polyprotic acid. Dear God, what does that mean? All right. We're going to do the same one, the exact same base or the exact same example. But I'm going to show you that sometimes you're going to have to do two ice tables. Okay. So I'll recreate that ice table from the first problem, and I'll show you guys, I'll fill it in and show you guys uh, what we're dealing with here, okay? So if the question isn't what's the pH, but it's what's the concentration of this ion right here at equilibrium? So our goal is to find the concentration of the CO3 2 minus ion at equilibrium. You might look at that and go, okay, that's easy. Just pull both of those H's off there. This is something that, like I said, I kind of sucked at when I was in college. So I'm going to show you guys, right? I just thought it would be way easier and it wouldn't take us much time. But basically, anytime you're going to the conjugate base, which is this without any H's, you have to do multiple ice tables. 
So I'm going to recreate the first one. You guys have this in your notes already because it's the same formula. It's the same concentration. It's everything's the same. Okay. But I'm going to rewrite this so I can show you guys how to do this. Right. So here's what you guys would do. You would say, all right, to get to this guy, I've got to go from H2 CO3 to HCO3 minus to CO3 two minus. Okay. That's kind of our progression. So what you guys are going to do is you're going to do multiple ice tables. So it's going to look like this. If there's something you guys can't see, let me know. All right. So our first one is going to look like this, just like we did in the last part. See, the reason we have to do this ice table and fill this in is because our second ice table is dependent on what this stuff is at equilibrium. So we said these guys are zero. This is a minus X. That's a plus X. That's a plus X. And then we found because we already did this problem and we solved for it, we said that X was 1.26 times 10 to the negative fourth. That means that this is 1.26 times 10 to the negative fourth. And this guy would be 6e negative fourth, close to 0 0.0369 or something like that. Notice that it doesn't drop its concentration very much. That's why we can use the chief factor, okay? So that's ice table number one. I'm going to erase this ice table, and I'm going to show you what ice table number two looks like. Ice table number two is... What if this guy acted like an acid? It has an H. It wants to get rid of that H. How would it look? Okay. So I'm going to show you guys what the second ice table is going to look like. And we're going to fill in using this stuff here. Okay. So you guys should have this down in front of you. I obviously don't, but I, I can figure it out. All right. So we're going to say that that guy is going to break into some H plus and some CO3 two minus. Now, this guy does this based on not the Ka1, but the Ka2. So our initial concentration for this guy was 1.26 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, if you're wondering where I got that, I got that from the previous ice table. Does that make sense? Um, Wait, what did you just write down? For some reason, I can't see your screen. So where did you write it down at? You see it now? 1.26. 1.26 times 10 to the negative fourth. Where at though? Under the HCO3. Okay. Okay. So I have that. Also from the previous ice table, I have 1.26 times 10 to the negative fourth. I got that from the previous ice table. And then I'm going to say that there's nothing there. We'll go ahead and draw our columns here so you guys Okay, so this is going to be minus X. This is going to be plus X. This is going to be plus X. Our whole goal is to figure out what that is at equilibrium. Okay, the CO3 two minus. Can you guys see that? Except for Jaylee, we can't see anything. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right, so how am I going to solve for X? What I'm going to have to use here is I'm going to have to use Ka2 for H2CO3, which in the book it says it is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th is equal to, I'm going to just fill all this crap out so you guys can see what's happening. Our goal is to find X. And I'm going to show you guys a little cheat code here. You can imagine that solving for X here would be a huge pain in the butt because you have all of these variables. This is looking very quadratic-ish. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So you have 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th is equal to X times that garbage all over one point that garbage there's a bunch of garbage there right here's my question do you think x is going to be very big 
No. Probably not. I mean, that is a really little K, which means that you don't get a lot of products here. So you can definitely do this and use this little cheat code. Get rid of the plus X, get rid of the minus X. This is a pretty easy problem right now. That divided by that is one. So literally X is going to be that concentration and molarity. Nice M. Okay, that's how you solve a multiple ice table. So a quick recap, you do the first ice table, you take the values at equilibrium and you do the second reaction. You take the polyprotic and its second reaction, you fill in from equilibrium what you got here for the initials and you do another ice table. It's really freaking gross. It looks really gross, but it's actually pretty easy after you do a couple of examples. Okay. That's all I got for that. So I'm going to take your questions right now. Crickets chirping. That's what I hear. Crickets. Kendra, unmute yourself real quick. Yes. Kendra, we need to do, we yes. need to talk about pH stuff. From your assignment, there's a couple of Did I slow down? yeah. There's a couple of uh, small things we need to clean up. I mean, they're very easy. They're just small mistakes that we'll clean up. Okay. So when we're done with this business, I want you to stay on because uh, we're going to talk about that assignment, and I'm going to show you a couple of things that will make it a little bit easier for you. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Anybody else have questions? Did you solve for X right there? Yep, that was X. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was very uh, anticlimactic there. But that okay. was X. It just worked out that the K2 was the X. Oh, I'm being stupid. Okay. Cool with that? Does that help? When you do like ionization percent thing yes to see if you can do that to take out the x can you do that for those two or is that so i'll tell works? you you would only want to do it for the first ice table to see if it was legal to do that every other ice table that you okay. do after the fact x is going to be so stinking small that you can you can kill it okay okay yeah so yeah percent ionized with it with yeah. Sorry. multiple ice tables is going to be yeah you can totally chop the X's there. I did this example because I knew we wouldn't have to use the quadratic. I wanted this example to be one where we didn't have to use the quadratic. So, all right. Any other questions before I stop recording? I'm not going to hang up, but I'm going to stop recording. Okay. I'm, I'm good. You're good. Okay. Stop recording.